uh, 3.04 p.m. and uh, it's time for our monthly uh, board meeting, Thursday, July 27th. It's been quite a while since we met, and so I want to welcome everybody back uh, to our monthly uh, board meeting. We have a lot of material to cover today, so without any further ado, I'd like to uh, call the order and roll call. Chairman Henry? Here. Vice Chair Parks? Here. Commissioner Ochowski? Here. Commissioner Turnbull? Present. Commissioner McFarland? Commissioner Salem? Here. Commissioner Van Andrew? Present. Uh, thank you much. Uh, we'll have uh, approval of the agenda. I'm with you, Kavina. I'll second. I'm probably moving the second roll call. Chairman Henry? Yes. Vice Chair Parks? Yes. Commissioner Ochowski? Yes. Commissioner Turnbull? Yes. Commissioner Salem? Yes. Commissioner Van Antwerp? Yes. Okay. Public comments on agenda items only. If there's any comments that you'd like to make from the audience on the agenda items only. Okay, hearing none, we'll move to item four, approval of the minutes for the regular meeting minutes from April 27, 2023. I move that we accept the minutes from the April 27, 2023 meeting. Second. And probably moved and second. Roll call. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Vice Chair Parks? Yes. Commissioner Ochowski? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Commissioner Turnbull? Yes. Commissioner Salem? Yes. Commissioner Van Antwerp? Yes. Okay, under a new business, we have a resolution 202303 approval of the name and additional signatories. For Hickory Point Bank account. Okay, the, uh, this resolution, along with the next uh, two, 2020 3 and 4 and 5, 3, 4 and 5, I'm sorry, is um, us asking uh, the board to approve us to add the um, principles of the property management company, our third party property management company, or, uh, or uh, Oakfield Place, Newton Senior Housing, and Sugar Creek and Robinson. Any questions? Any further comments? Okay, I have a uh, motion for approval. I move that we approve resolution 2023 4 and 5. Second. If there's a and second, a roll call, please. Chairman Henry? Yes. Vice Chair Parks? Yes. Commissioner Wachowski? Yes. Commissioner Turnbull? Yes. Commissioner Salem? Commissioner Van Antwerp? Yes. Okay. We're all ready down to our Chief Executive Officer's report. Oh, we still have approval of the admin plan. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess we have to have a uh, motion for approval of the admin plan. And this is a project that's been a long time coming for us. Um, so we're about to have our draft of the administrative plan up. And Jennifer is going to uh, explain to the board the major changes. Jennifer is also, by the way, our new deputy director. So <laughs> welcome, Jennifer. <laughs> She's been with us since May. So. <laughs> so, thank you. So, um, we're going to just recap a few of the major changes that are going into the administrative plan. The um, old, big administrative updates are um, that we updated the HECC mission and vision. To align with the 2023 move to work plan, um, the mission to provide a quality living environment as a foundation for individuals to achieve their full potential, our vision, develop quality affordable housing communities, provide an opportunity and support to maximize individual potential while sustaining long term financial viability of HHCC. We've also implemented the HD2775 source of income protection law in Illinois which was in January of this year. We added the Illinois Human Rights 
Rights Act, which addresses non-discrimination based on specific protected classes. We updated and added the Illinois Relay Service. It addresses program accessibility for persons with hearing or vision impairments. And we updated our policy for limited English proficient speakers. Um, we will have set staff now access the language line for translation services. A uh, few changes to the housing quality standard inspections. HACC will no longer charge $50 inspection fee. We updated a policy to allow for self-certification of non-life-threatening repairs if agreed and signed by both the owner and the tenant. Initial inspections can be approved now prior to leasing as long as the deficiencies are non-life-threatening. We're allowing alternative inspections but they will be accepted as long as the property has other subsidies, such as home, light tech, other HUD inspections that have passed. We will permit remote video inspections on a case-by-case -case basis. We've added a policy that HACC will not steer to PHA owned property. And we've increased our initial voucher term from 90 days to 120 days with a 30-day extension increment available by request for approval. Some changes to our recertification processes, income adjustments. HACC will initiate the process to change income if it's to correct an error or to add income in the event of program fraud. We will not require staff to process increases for income changes unless the family has no other source of income. And we will process a decrease in income if the loss of wages is no fault of the team. HCD program changes move to work. We've added MTW Activity 2012-1 policy on flat rate and local payment standards. We increased the payment standards to 120% to help counteract with the rising cost of rent in the area. We added MTW Activity 2011-4 tiered flat rent and minimum rent schedule. The minimum rent for special purpose vouchers is $50 and act as traditional HEV vouchers. For all other MTW vouchers, the HECC utilizes tier flat rent and minimum rent by their inside. We've added mandatory LSS and term limits for MTW vouchers to eight year term for households whose head is able by an individual age 18 through 54. We've added landlord incentives vacancy payments up to 80% of the contract rent for one month if the landlord is willing to rent to another HCV tenant within 60 days, and a $500 incentive to the new landlords if they're first time landlord. We removed CMAP references and added key performance indicators for quality control procedures, and we've changed our language to allow for special program housing types, which includes our single room occupancy, congregate housing, group home, shared housing, and manufacturing homes. We've updated our percent for our income targeting. Our income targeting is 75% of very low income families, so that's 50% of our area mark median income. Criminal screening background, a six month look back period, specifically for drug related criminal activity, violent criminal activity, and criminal activity that threatens the health, safety, or right to peaceful enjoyment of the premises. And we've updated the organization of the waiting list to clarify the process for PDD and PDD rad wait list, that they will be different separate, different waiting lists separate from our HCV program. <coughs> We've updated the waitlist as well where um, applicants are now applying online and are no longer accepting paper applications. The HAC staff, HACC staff will be available to offer assistance if families need um, assistance applying online. And the families can now contact the company that does manage the waitlist updates if they want to know what place them on the waitlist. Those are the major updates for the
would just like to say that um, the uh, administrative plan is quite quite thick and a lot of volume and a lot of information in there. So it's just too uh, too much to try and provide you know uh, the commissioners with the copy. Uh, so I just want to let all the commissioners know that if there's something that you want to if you hear uh, something and you want to research it, it's uh, there'll be a copy of the administrative plan in, in the office here. Uh, it took me about two and a half minutes, three days to get through this. It's over what, about 500 pages. About 900 pages. So you can, you can see why it's quite costly. Uh, when I picked it up, and threw when I posted it, picked it up, I said, did you tell me a little bit why I this up? And he was not there, I was just excited. Uh, it took me some time. I didn't read every word of it, that's for sure. <laughs> that's the reason why, if you, if you get, you know, if you have a question comes up, and someone that might ask you a question, you can come over here and search it out for yourself. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that. And thank you, thank you for highlighting the main major changes to that. So without, I would like to uh, make, if there's no further questions, I would like to entertain a motion for approval of the administrative plan. Can I um, say one thing? Yeah. Can, can we have an email to us though? Yes, it'll be available. We can email it to you, but it'll also be available on the uh, website. But I'll make sure we email a copy to you. Okay. I already received a copy of the email. That's when I, that's when I got alarmed. <laughs> Probably moved in second. Do we have a roll call? Chairman Henry? Yes. Vice Chair Parks? Yes. Commissioner Wachowski? Yes. Commissioner Turnbull? Yes. Commissioner Salen? Yes. Commissioner Van Andrew? Yes. Okay. Now it's time for the executive office report. All right. So I have to, before I do our uh, champions of the month, I want to send two congratulations. One to Reverend Parks for graduating <laughs> with your doctorate. <laughs> Jake Skillings and uh, 
they can come here and get help. Uh, I will have two UVille interns, uh, yes. two UVille school, two UVille students help um, people fill out applications in the on the computers in the lobby. Um, but it will be open online. We open on seven to seven in the morning. I thought it was back to or something. Well, well, one yeah. a.m. Yeah. 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 I asked some people I know who can't help me be in the white or something to sign up. But it's a lot of so they don't have to like get on this one. the electric company to see what the uh, 
PHP application in that we're asking for a million dollars on, and we'll know probably sometime in, around Thanksgiving. And then just from a timeline standpoint, um, you know, the drawings are currently being drawn right now, and by the time we go through the drawing the city process, it's probably uh, February or March kind of start date. Thank you, Chris. Are there any questions that the board may have? naturally try to just let the building empty and not release these units. Um, and so our goal is to have about 18 units um, and renovate 18 units at a time over a two month period and then just continue to like move people in the building in place. And so we don't plan on displacing any of our current tenants. Okay. You got the same as you did. Yeah, it's so hard to do what you do it. Um, you know, you typically want to take a whole floor and do a floor at a time, but since we're doing all the plumbing and electric and mechanical, it's kind of a, a combination between doing vertical stacks of plumbing because you want, you know, plumbing goes in, in vertical, so it's called a tier. So we're still going to be working some of the logistics out, but, you know, the, the goal is minimization as quickly as possible. We're looking at probably uh, a total of, this is the goal, so please never put the principal down, but the goal is uh, a, a turn of uh, every two months, of 18 units every two months, which is a, a, a week of move. Uh, six weeks of renovation and a week move back in, which is actually um, the goal is that, 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 that that's pretty quick. <laughs>
Um, and we are celebrating 38 graduates. So uh, kudos to the UPIL program for really pushing um, through uh, 38 graduates. Unbelievable. So, um, so another big group. I think the last one was 30. So <laughs> you're 30 by 8. So. <laughs> uh, that's exciting. Uh, and mental toughness also began this week. And I believe you all had about 50 students start. And uh, they'll be taking clothes and champagne and eight in Urbana, so making big cuts uh, for this round. Um, uh, so we got that funding for Urbana and on the site on Broadway, so eight of, eight of the students will go there. Um, they have to be Urbana residents to be served there. And then we'll keep 12 here in Champaign. And then we also did a graduation trip to uh, Six Flags. So for all of the graduates who wanted to attend, we got tickets to Six Flags and just had a fun day up there. So it's a picture on the next slide of that. <laughs> so uh, it was amazing to like see the smiles on their faces, and a lot of it's kind of unbelievable that a lot of them have never. To me, it's unbelievable that a lot of them have never been there because I lived in that. I'm from Gurney, New Zion area, so I feel like we lived there as kids, and so it was nice to see their faces and you know for them to be able to experience that. They had a blast, and I learned how scary Siobhan was. <laughs>
to go up and spend the night and Vince had to keep up with them. So. <laughs> That's good.
So as you can see, these big cohorts that we've been pumping out, we're already almost through with that grant. And uh, that is a one and a half um, billion dollar grant for that one. We were also given Champagne Arpa, which we were served 25 students, which we did that. And we were given $150,000 to do that, which we have um, completed at this point. IYC is our Illinois Youth Build Coalition grant, which um, we were also able to serve 25 students, which we hit that mark. And they gave us $405,000, and we have about $100,000 left. Um, United Way uh, Victory Over Violence grant, um, they gave us $75,000 for that, and that was just for supportive services and um, tuition for uh, students who don't fit the traditional youth build background, so they may live in rental or Urbana or uh, not be in the age range. Um, and so that was for 75 k and we have extended that. And then we were also given a second United Way grant, and that's the Community Essential ones for 30 k And that one also was for supportive service and other um, needs that are um, not covered by our DOL funds, and we have approximately 6 k left in that. Um, and then we were just given the Urbana ARPA recently here. There's 25 students to serve on that grant over 18 months, and we have been given 350 k for that, and we are hard at work spending it down.
I, uh, I noticed that uh, we, we have some, uh, some disbursements and what Shabal was presenting uh, the grants were used except for the $75,000 of United Way. They are uh, pretty much, most of these grants are paid first and will reimburse your letter. So you can imagine there's uh, normally some, some cash, cash flow that needs to be flowing there. I was pleased to hear a few minutes ago about the, uh, the million dollars that we will be getting for developer fees last year. <laughs> I would uh, at this point, that was settled down just for getting of our money paid back. But, uh, but anyway, I just wanted to, to mention that uh, we we have some cash flow flowing, some cash flow in there, so that's something to take into consideration. Uh, regarding the budget, uh, the actual versus budget comparison, uh, like I said, there were three months there presented, so I'm going to go directly to June and I just want to bring to your attention that uh, on the income side, we're about a uh, million eight hundred uh, under what was budgeted, and, and mainly uh, our funding from HUD has been overall so far lower than uh, it was expected, uh, and that's something that uh, we are we're working on. At first, uh, I thought that the major problem was in the admin fees and the reporting, but uh, there's also uh, a component here, a big component on the HAP, so I just want to mention that uh, that's something we're all working on, <coughs> trying to, to, have, uh, to have more, more, more financing from us, because that's something that definitely for all these projects that, that we are mentioning, uh, we need to, to have the money flowing. Fortunately, I don't see a big uh, deviation on the part of the expenses. Uh, we're actually just slightly over budget, 2.3%. Uh, that's, that's hardly anything. And, and uh, this was prepared in June. I want to say that, uh, just just for example, just to give an example, um, the moment I prepared this, I had to be refunded <coughs> second quarter of 2023 uh, from the Department of Labor. But shortly after, we got $200,000, which was pretty much even the numbers here. So, and I prefer uh, to show the, the, the effect when it happens. Uh, different than what uh, the other company will, will, uh, will actually be advised, but uh, I, I prefer to be a bit more cautious because sometimes the funds will, will take a little longer than expected to, to arrive. But uh, basically, that's what I can comment about the real world.
session. So for discussion of item A, discussion of okay. firing of item B. Item B. What? Item B. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're going to, in closed session, will be discussion item B, discussion of 